Creating the perfect report can take time. And once you have that report created, it only makes sense that you may want to use that report as the basis for a report template. In this video, you will see how to create a report template based on an existing report design document. For this demo, I've created a simple list report. It has a header area with a logo and a company name, a report title, differing first page and any page header, and data rows presented in a table format. So let's pretend that this was a beautiful report that we were very pleased with and therefore want to use this report as the basis of a new report template. Our first step is to create a directory where we're going to put our bespoke templates. The location doesn't matter. In a future step, we will let Genero Studio know where to look for our custom report templates. For this demonstration, I've created a directory called My Report Templates. With this directory created, we now want to copy the report design document that we like so much and paste it into our new template directory. We'll update the name of the report. Let's call it Nice List Template and we'll change this extension to 4RT. It is the 4RT extension that makes it a template. We also need to include a template data schema. While you can write your own, when you first start creating templates, we advise you examine the provided template data schema files provided in the GRE template directory. Template data schema files have a .rsd extension. We'll talk about creating or modifying a template data schema file in another video. For this demonstration, grab a copy of the simple list template.rsd and paste it into your custom template folder. Rename to have the same name as your template. We are now ready to open our new template. We open the template and then we go to our data view. The data view, we need to change the association to reference our nice list template.rsd file. Once we've added that data schema, we can scroll down and see that the previous fields are marked as errors, which is expected. They no longer exist in our selected data schema. We'll need to remove them and allow for our template field objects to be used in their place. Let's look at the data schema. In this schema, you can see that we have three sections labeled as fields. And we go and look in the report structure view. You can see that they are presented at blue dots or template field triggers. A template field trigger, like any trigger, causes its contained fragment to be duplicated for every row in the data model. In the case of a template field trigger, the data model is the set of fields selected by the user and the assistant when they come to an add fields page in the wizard. What we need to do now is add template field objects for each of our template field triggers. Template field objects can be found in the toolbox. Template field objects are specifically created for templates. They are capable of creating different objects based on their context, the exact same way the report designer behaves when dragging objects from the data view into the design view. To make all this happen, we're going to be doing a bit of rearranging. Let's start by incorporating a template field trigger into our data row. Our report has existing fields, and now these need to be generated for our template by using the template field object. We expand our table row, and we know that aside from the spacer, we don't need any of these fields that are marked as errors. We delete these fields. We then drag our template field trigger onto the table row so that it falls after the spacer. And with the template field trigger selected, go to your toolbox, double click on the template field object, and it is added as a child to the template field trigger. The other two template field triggers we need to place are going to be within the two different headers of our report. Our original report had these column headers. We want these column headers to be replaced by the fields that the user selects when they go to their add field page. For the first page header, we expand the stripe. We get rid of the existing columns. Then with the table header selected, we go and find our fields. We grab the first template field trigger. 
we drag it onto the table header row. And then with that field trigger selected, we double click on our template field object and it's placed as a child. We repeat the process for the any page header. We go to our table header stripe. We grab our column headers. We delete them. We grab our template field trigger. We drop it on top of that table header slice. We select that template field trigger. We double click on the template field object and again is added as the child. We've now set up the template for what will become the second page of our report from Template Wizard, allowing the user to select one or more fields from our report and populate the column headers and the on every row fields appropriately. The next thing to handle are the placeholders that will appear on the variable page in the wizard. If we look at the data schema, we can see that the schema provides for four variables, font name, logo URL, organization name, and title. Now, rather than what we've provided, we want the user to be able to provide their own logo, to provide their own company name, to provide their own titles. To allow this to happen, select the logo in the properties, find the location. Instead of the URL we specify, open the expression editor, we want to have the logo URL that the user provides. I can do my control space bar. Select logo URL, and now that field will be used. The user will be able to enter in a value, and that will be used as the logo. For the company name, go to the text field, replace that with the organization name. For the title, Replace that with the title variable or the title field. And for the title, we're going to have to repeat it because we want it to be for the first page header and for the any page header. We've now specified the placeholders. Let's go ahead and save our changes to the template and we can move on to the next step. Let me take you back to the report for template page. When you look at the report for template page, there's two things I want you to notice now. One is that you have an image of the report. That image is also used as a little icon. It has a title. It also has description. And we also have some filters up here. The next two files you create are going to provide for this information. The first thing we need to do is provide for an image file. I've already created an image file. I'm going to paste it in here. But I want you to notice that it has the same template name, nice list template. It has a .4RT and then a .png. This image is simply a capture of the first page of my report. To provide the title and the description and the filtering tags, you need to create what's known as a .prop file. Again, we'll navigate to our GRE directory. We'll look in the templates subdirectory, and then you're going to find an existing .prop file. Let me go find the simple list template.prop, since that will be close to what we need. You're going to copy it. You're going to paste it into your template folder. You're going to rename it, again, including the .4RT before the .prop. We then want to edit the prop file. Inside the .prop file, on the first line, you notice the tags. Those provide the checkboxes for the filter list. The second line is the label. That becomes the name of the report. We'll change that to be Scott Simple List. The third is the description, and the description can be as descriptive as you want it to be. We'll change it to say Scott Simple List. The slash n is our next line character. Uh, you can edit this, add, or take away as much as you want. This is something that you get to customize completely. The last thing I'm going to have you do is create another directory inside of our template directory and name this directory with your template name once again. We won't fill this directory in this video, but remember the orange highlighting when you created a report from a template as you clicked on the different placeholders and the different repetitions? This is the directory that you would need to hold all of the images 
that show the user what part of a report is referenced by a repetition or a selected field or a placeholder. We now have the template we want to use, so we just need to let Genero Studio know that we have added a new template. And to do this, we update our personal creatables.com file to add an entry for our custom template directory. Now to find the correct creatables.conf, I'm going to ask you to do two things. First, identify what template you were using. Inside of Genero Studio, if you look at your configuration, you can scroll down and you can identify what the template directory is. Our template directory is the dbapp 4.0. With this information, I can now go and open my own personal creatable.conf. You can see that mine is located in my personal folder, app data slash roaming slash 4 js slash Genero Studio version slash TPL slash dbapp 4.0. If you have any difficulty finding your personal creatable.conf, go and look in our documentation. It'll help guide you. When I open this, what you're going to be adding is you're going to be adding a document directory entry. The code for this element I took from the default creatable.conf, and all I've done is copy over the document directory for my report from template. And as you'll see, what I've done is I've updated the directory path to include my custom directory. I placed it at the end of my creatable.conf and I've saved my changes. Now that we've updated creatables.conf, the next thing we need to do is reload it, the templates. So we do tools, specific setup, reload. At this point, our template is ready to use. We go to File New, Report from Template, and here we can see Scott's simple list. You can see the image that we provided. Select the template, and you can go through the template wizard to create a new report using the template you created from your previous report. And here you have the report created from your new template. Now, as a side note, notice that this report, we didn't take any advantage of the groupings. We'll try to cover adding groupings on in a follow-up video.